and let's get let's jump into it so let's make sure the raise hand feature is working for you guys by asking you a question how many of you are brand new to book creator please raise your hands wow look at all of that how many of you were in my last webinar on book creator and i already warned you there's going to be a little bit of repeat so are you guys going to forgive me for the uh for the repeat hopefully hopefully so um so uh, we have some repeat, but what I've done is I've peppered in here some um, accessibility uh, options. And I want to point this out. I'm going to come in here in the slide show view. I'd like you to see all the amount of slides that I have made for you. So the reason I'm showing this to you is I so much would rather demo than go into um, all of these. So you will be getting these slides, but I personally prefer uh, to demo. And I, I usually find out most of you guys prefer that as well. So I'm going to use, um, I'm going to demo and then I'll just use the slides. I'll just use the slides to um, talk about and go through and go, oh yeah, oh yeah, I mentioned that, I mentioned that, I mentioned that. So let's just dive right in. Here's our outline. What is Book Creator? Who's using it? making a book, reading a book, sharing a book, teacher resources, remote learning resources. I forgot to add this slide, uh, uh, accessibility and uh, support. And then when you're done, you can have a snack. <laughs> Feel free to go get a snack, or whatever you want. Go for it and get it. So book creator. I always, when I present Book Creator, I always go, guys, guess what Book Creator does? And, and the answer is it creates books. And it does a really nice job at creating books. One of the things I never knew until I started updating this presentation for accessibility information was Book Creator was created for a dyslexic child, which Dan, at some point, when we get more into, um, when we get more into accessibility, I'd love to, if you don't mind sharing some of that story, because I just thought that was fantastic. So it started its life as an iPad app, and it is still an iPad app. And one of the things I didn't do justice to a lot last webinar was talking about the fact that the iPad app is alive and well, and you can use it. So if you are, if you have kids at home and you want your kids to be able to create a book at home, if you want your parents, uh, you want to tell your parents, if you have an iPad to buy the book creator app, I think it's $5 or something around that. And then students can create books on their own at home. Heck, the family could even create books together using the iPad app. So I'm going to focus on the, um, the web version because as a teacher in the classroom, this is gonna come in really handy for you and then also for remote learning. But guys, please keep in mind, they can use an iPad app and they can create their books at home for themselves, which is pretty cool. So this lets you create books. Uh, it is free. It is completely free. It works on the variety of most browsers and for free you get one library and in that library you can put in 40 books. Your students would then join that library and then they would have access to make a book. One of the cooler features and well there's a lot of cool features in Book Creator you'll find out is collaboration. And collaboration is usually part of their premium model. And their premium model would give you additional libraries and additional books but Book Creator is making collaboration free for 90 days. Is that right, Dan? Did I get that correct? I think it's 90 days. Yes. Uh, thank cool. you, hon. Um, so you're getting uh, premium for uh, collaboration free for 90 days. So it's a great way. Um, oh, I love seeing this. Thank you, uh, Darlene. Since the last webinar, I downloaded the app and my five-year-old said, love creating books. And that that's what I think is also very important right now is how to keep everyone busy, how to give everyone new things to do. And, and that's really, you know, I think a big thing is give something new to, to engage. So let's, let's dive into this. So the way that you would get started, and I, I want to point out that this class is not going to be like a step-by-step. -step. I definitely talk quicker than your average presenter. I have this crazy desire to teach you as much as I can. So I, if this is more for you to check out and maybe click here or there on your copy and then check out the slides. Um, but I wanna point out how the whole thing gets started. It's app.bookcreator.com. And that's how you get started. You would come in here and you would say that you wanted to create a new account. 
and then you would create an account and you would get a library. Your students could then use their sign-in and they could use Google or Office 365. And if they don't have email, they can actually sign in using a QR code as well. So there's all these ways, and, and I have these slides. But once you sign up with app.bookcreator.com, you will then be looking at a library. Uh, Dan was kind enough to give me an example library. But what we're going to do is we're going to come here, and I'm going to show you my library, because this is what your library will look like the very first time. So I want us to start um, start from ground ground zero, so to speak. So hey, and we're super close to busting the busting the seams on la on Monday's attendance. I was wondering if we we're going to have more people here um, than than Monday. We might be doing that. All right, guys. So I logged in. I created my account with app.bookcreator.com, and now I'm going to create a new book. When I create a new book, you'll notice I have all of these different options that I can choose from. Right here, I have three different book shapes that I can choose from. And if you didn't know this, and this is really fun, they have comic book looks and feels. So your students can create comic books. I think this is awesome on a variety of levels, but especially when we have those younger storytellers that might not be able to put a lot of words together. What a great way to get them started with a comic book. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a square book right here, and it's going to open my book. Now, when it opens my book, you'll see here that I'm looking at the cover, and then you'll see here on either side, um, you'll have arrows. And it starts, I believe, your book starts with three pages. You'll notice I've hit the end of the book, page three of three, and then I could add pages right here. I could also add pages elsewhere. But I want to show you my, my first um, accessibility trick. And I'm going to try, I was trying this last night. So I'm no hands on the mouse and I'm going to use the arrow keys. And do you see how it's changing up there and it's saying page one, page two, page three? Who didn't know that you could use your arrow keys to change the pages of the book in Book Creator? Wonderful, nice, really nice accessibility feature. Uh, super, super helpful for our younger learners. And so that's one of your first accessibility tricks that you get. So, uh, so now what we're going to do is let's, um, let's take care of this cover a little bit. And I'm going to come up right here and I'm going to click on this little inspector. So this is the inspector and I'm going to be talking about him quite a bit. You'll probably hear the word come out of my mouth 50 times. The inspector is where you create your core background colors, but it's also where you edit things that you place into Book Creator. So you're going to hear me say it often. I'm going to click here, then guess where I'm going to click. So your process when you begin to add things into Book Creator is to go and to look at the editor. So you'll notice here, it says solid colors. I click here, ta-da, there is my solid cover book page. I can even come down here to recent, but where did I get these from? I got them from down here, comics. So if I wanted to, I could make that my cover. I could make that my cover. I could make that my cover. And I'm just coming in here, right here, and I'm quickly and easily being able to change that cover. If I wanted to do something that looked a little more paper-based, based, I could. So let's do that on another page. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna say pages. I'm gonna click here on page two. I could have used the arrow keys as well. But now I'm gonna come in here Sorry, going to go to the inspector and we'll come here to paper. And I just am a huge fan of this as a music major. Do I have any musicians here? If perchance, are there any music people here? I love this option. I, I absolutely love the fact that one of the page options is music. And then we'll come in here and I'll come back to that inspector. And um, I can even come in here and I can put in all different looks and feels throughout the pages of the book, which is, which is nice. It's just, you're going to notice if you, if you haven't used this before, you're going to notice that it's, it's really nice and straightforward. So I worked my way back to the cover of the book and now I'm going to click plus right here and I'm going to be able to add media. And I hope you don't mind. I'm going to go slightly out of order and I'm going to start with text because I want to add some text here. And I'm going to say my awesome book. You'll notice you don't have a lot of choices here. We're going to talk about this guy a little bit later. Bold, italic, underline, 
I can also add a link and we'll talk about that guy as well in a moment. So I'm gonna click on done. So now that that is in there, guess what I click on to change that around? I come up in here and I click on the inspector. So with this text selected, I can click on the inspector and this is where I can change its size, I can change its alignment, I can change its font, and this is where I also want to give a shout out to an accessibility item. Who has not heard of the font Open Dyslexic? Please raise your hands. So Open Dyslexic is a font that is misweighted. And it turns out the more you misweight fonts, the more it helps dyslexics slow down and read content. Open Dyslexic is called Open Dyslexics because it's exactly that. It's an open font. Anyone is able to use it. It's available for free for you to download. It is really nice. I am slightly dyslexic. The older I get, the more I realize it's because of a vision disorder, but it really helps me slow down with my reading. And it's also why Comic Sans, even though it's picked on a lot, uh, Comic Sans is a great font for struggling readers. So I can come in here with this selected and change the font, change the color. I can even customize the color if I wanted to. Uh, I could even give it a shadow and I could change its layer order if there was a lot of other content here. And yeah, I can stretch this guy out. And so now I have my awesome book. And yes, you've guessed it probably, you can rotate this. This hurts my head because <laughs> once again, I struggle with reading. So when you put it on an angle, it hurts my head. So there we have it. So now that I've shown you that, I'm going to show you a couple other features and we're going to go in a couple pages. Let me add another page. And you'll notice I'm just showing you a couple different ways that you can add pages. And so, yeah, you could move pages around. If you're getting a feeling that this is pretty intuitive, um, it, is, it is very intuitive. So. I have my page here. Let me click on the inspector just to show this to you one more time. I can come in here and I can choose a different color. Uh, we'll go with we'll go with that guy. Oops, I didn't select it. That's okay. We'll we'll leave it at this. Now nah, I, I can't handle. There we go. There we go. Now I'm happy. I was happy before, just for the record. Um, so I'm going to come in here and say add an item. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to go over each of these because they have some pretty cool features in them. We've already gone over the text tool and I'm going to add a couple other items to that text tool uh, in a moment. But let's start here with import. And I'm going to come in here. And when I went into import, you'll notice it says images, maps, filters, drive, and embed. So images is a Google search, safe Google search that I can use. So let's type in kittens. Ah, uh, I just don't know which one to choose from. They're all so cute. Oh, look, here's one. Here's one eating paperwork. Oh no, or, so, okay, that's an adorable kitten. So if I wanted to change this, um, I can obviously change its size, just like we talked about last time. And then if I wanted to edit it even more, I click on, you guessed it, the inspector. So when I click on the inspector, you're going to notice that I can come in here where hyperlink is and I can type a link in. So we're gonna send this kitten to my, to my website, lessiefisher.com. And then here is another accessibility option. And you'll notice this was from Monday's one. If you haven't heard of the term, well, let me ask you, who has not heard of the term alt text before? Please raise your hand if you haven't heard of this term. So this is something that's really important to learn about. Alt text is available in almost any application that you add an image to. It is on anything where you create a web page. It is on um, any place that you will add an image. Any time that you're creating content that might be shared with someone else, alt text is an option, even in word processing, even in Google Docs. Because if we have someone that's visually impaired, they're not going to know what this image is. So if you're, for example, providing statistics or providing any sort of content, it helps them to know what that picture is. So I'm going to come in here and say a very cute 
gray kitten chewing on something, even though it's not chewing, but so you want to make sure, and I've seen some of these be incredibly verbose, and that's really a nice thing because the more that you can explain it, the more it's going to help someone out that might have um, a vision issue. So, all right, so we have that added in there. All right, so now that I've done that, I'm going to head right back up in here to media, and I'm going to go right back to import, and I'm going to come here to maps. And we were talking about London earlier, so I'm going to type in London. And we're going to come, wow, it took me right to, right to uh, Dan, if you have wonderful memories of, of Bet, well, you, you're out there all the time, but I'm going to come in here and say, this is the map I wanted. All right, I just saw someone say they learned something. You had no idea that you could add a map page in here. Yay. And I want to let you know just how tough it is sometimes to be a struggling learner. Uh, now that we have purple with that color map, it hurts my brain so much that I need to do that to make it better. <laughs> so for those of you that, that don't have vision problems, um, it, it's a great thing. But with vision problems, it, it really makes it tough to, uh, to have varying colors. It hurts my head. So I'm going to, I added pages up here before. I want to show you here. I'm going to add another page. I'm just trying to show you the different ways that, um, that you can add pages. We're gonna head right back here to media and we're not done yet kids. So I can come in here and I can say files and I can come in here and I could add all sorts of files. So I have, I don't know, Dan, does it automatically play animated GIFs? I don't know this one. No, it doesn't. It doesn't, it. no, it doesn't. <laughs> you, you, can, you can embed them. Um, oh, okay, yeah, gotcha. It's, it's, it's tricky, but yeah. Uh, it's all good, it's all Not good. Yet. I'm just, I just try, no, oh, that's my favorite word that a company says, is when they say the yet word. I always love that word, so good to know. So uh, I'm coming in here and it doesn't support uh, GIFs, but once again, I could choose something from my files. I could also choose something from my Google Drive. So I could come in here, I can connect directly to Drive, and then it would bring up all sorts of things that would let me connect directly into it, which is, um, which is cool. So, so there's just some examples for you. Now, one of, is, but, but before I go on, is it making sense so far, kids? Are we liking this so far? Are you guys like, ooh? Awesome. So now, last week, I really surprised people with this. And uh, I'm going to do it again because people couldn't believe it. And I want to talk to you about this feature um, in import, and it's embed. How many of you have not used this feature before? Please, please raise your hands if you haven't used this feature before. So what embed means is there is certain content from websites that you can embed into another location. And so, for example, if I wanted to, I could embed a video, I could embed tweets, I can embed all sorts of things. Um, and one of the things that you can embed, well, let me ask you a different question, and, and I'm going to take the class off the rails a little bit, but last week they freaked out over this, so I, I love doing that to people. Who here knows of Google Expeditions? Please raise your hand if you know about Google Expeditions. All right, who didn't know? that you can actually view Google Expeditions on the web. Raise your hands. So you can view Google Expeditions on the web. And if you didn't know this, it's at a website called poly.google.com. So a lot of people are used to Expeditions just being on a mobile device. You can actually do this on the web. So I'm going to come up here into Poly and I'm going to click. And when I go to poly.google.com, I'm going to head here to Tours. I click on tours and now I'm looking at all of these different Google expeditions, but I'm looking at them in a browser. So if you have students with Chromebooks at, at home, they could actually do this without needing a mobile device. And I could even see the ones that Google themselves. Oh, let, let, oh hey, I was just here. So, so I'm going, I'm going here. I was just here in January. This is uh, the Titanic Museum in Belfast, Ireland. So um, 
so I can come in here and if you've used expeditions before, you're going to notice that you'll get this content and then I can come in here to the next scene. And this is where these, these pillars, just so you know, this is where the Titanic was built. And so you could actually walk in here. It's like I'm going back to Belfast. I ate there. Wow, this is meta. And this is the entry. So yeah, so they made this cute little, this, this nice little item. Yeah, I remember it well. So now I want to share this. Not only do I want to share this, I want to put this in Book Creator. So I'm still in Polly. I'm going to come down here to the lower right corner and click on share. When I click on share, you're going to see a link right here that says embed. So I capture this text. So I'm going to copy this text. I'm going to head right back here to book creator and I'm right back here where it says import media. I come here to embed and now I'm going to paste in that code that I got from Polly. Is that making sense, guys, how I did that? How I mooched that code? Awesome. And so now that I've mooched that code, I'm gonna come in here, say confirm web link. And now it says, I wanna double check the page. What's the title of it? I could change the title of this if I want. Click add to book. And now there is that item waiting for me in book creator. So I, you know, as part of the students or, or your, you know, you, we can look at Book Creator in so many different ways, but, you know, if you wanted to share a story with your students or your students wanted to create a story together or a student wanted to create a story for you, and, you know, if this was a Google class, we could, um, we could talk about how to make an expedition. It's actually not that tough. If you go onto my blogs on my website, lesliefisher.com, go to my blogs, I have an item that talks about making your um, making your own Google expedition. So, so that's in there. All right. So now that that's that, so those are all the really cool things that you can do in media. And I bet, I bet some of you knew book creator, but had no idea book creator could do all of that stuff. And it's just going to get better as we go. So yay, I love that. So I want to point out once again, with this selected, you notice I changed the size. If I head right back to the inspector, um, I can come in here and say, do I want to show a thumbnail? What's the title? What's the font? The font's this guy down here, color, all those things that you've seen already. And then we'll get to playing this and we'll talk about how that works. We're kind of in the design mode uh, right now, uh, but we'll talk about uh, playing this in a tiny bit. I'm going to go and I'm going to add another page. And now when I come in here and say, add another page, I'm going to go to the camera. Don't mind me. I'm trying to figure out what camera it's going to go to. So I'm going to come here to the camera. Which one? Hey, I went to this one. It, it, it changes its mind sometimes. Hi guys, how are you? Are you having fun? So, um, by the way, you know, I am sure a lot of us are rocking these hairstyles right now. Uh, and uh, just so you know, um, just so you know, I'm cutting it. Whenever my hairdresser is allowed to cut my hair again and he has time, I'm going right to the grays. So I'm, I'm going to be short hair for a while, but all right. So it is, um, Dan. <laughs> Dan said his wife had to give him a haircut. Did she go on you? Did she go on YouTube? Cause I hear like, that's the thing. Um, I hear that that's the thing is to go on YouTube and yeah, my friend. We did have a look on YouTube first to, to check how to do it. She did an <laughs> amazing job. I've got to say. I love hearing that though. And my friend, a friend of mine, like this, really high-end investment banker friend. Uh, I was talking to him, I go, so what'd you do today? He goes, oh, I colored my wife's hair. And I'm like, this is the new, the new fun. Um, and Marnie, Marnie said the same thing. I hope people donate their hair. That's exactly what I'm doing. I'm, I'm gonna wait as long as I can. Um, I'm gonna wait as long as I can. Like, I don't need to get it done right now. And I'm going to donate it to Locks of Love. I've always wanted to do that. So I'm gonna go, um, I'm gonna go, uh, I guess what I'm gonna do. Okay, so here we go. Take a picture. Um, it's pretty fun. I mean, these are, these are interesting times, but we are making the best of them. Take a picture. Here we go. So I say use picture and boop, there it is. It is automatically, um, lots of love doesn't take colored hair. Um, so I add the picture. There's my mug. Same sort of deal like we talked about before. I could resize, I could rotate. I could even come in here and click on information. 
And once again, I can put in a link. So if I wanted this to go to, for example, uh, my web page, and once again, please remember to use alt text. So if I come here and click on the plus symbol, we're gonna head right back to camera because you might have noticed something else. Let's record video. So I'm gonna click in here and say record video. Hey folks, so one of the newer features in Book Creator is something really cool and it has all to do about accessibility. It will actually create captions for what I said. Not only will it create captions, it can do it automatically. Not only that, when it's done, I can edit them, which is really neat. Very cool feature came out in January. I'm going to click stop video so I can show you how to do that. So you're going to notice, and I want to point out something, and I didn't, I didn't, and Dan, help me out, picture in picture option. Could I record a video again and do a picture in picture? Um, no, I'm not, I'm not sure uh, what you mean. <laughs> you see on my screen, it says picture in picture right here. Oh, yeah, I don't know what that is. That's something to do with your, with Chrome, I think. Oh, okay, gotcha. You could try it. It's not something we've built. <laughs> I know. It blows, it blows up, it blows up. But here's something I want to point out. And I forgot to mention this on Monday. It's one of those I realized I didn't mention this. When you're done recording something in Book Creator, be it your voice or be it video, there are three dots and one of the options is to download it. So you can download this video if you wanted it to. If you wanted to. Who didn't know you could download video like that? And I caught me off guard too when I saw it. I'm like, yay. So you, if, like I've had people say, oh, what can I use to record audio? And I'm like, use Book Creator. You can download what you record there. So just an FYI. So I'm gonna come in here and say use video. Um, so I will try picture in picture in a moment. I kind of wanted to see if I would blow it up, but if we have time near the end. So now that I have that video, my face looks silly. So we'll make it a little bit smaller. And I'm going to keep this selected, and I'm going to come. I'm going to come in here into the inspector. Now, what you're going to see is you're going to see that it isn't happening yet because it takes a few moments for that video uh, to hit the editing. So let me. I'm going to change the the tracks a little bit, but let me do a, a, a temperature check. I shouldn't say temperature check. Let me do a brain check. How are we doing so far? Your brain's okay. Awesome. I just, I don't like going out of order. Uh, oh, there it is and it showed up. So we can, we can stay here and see how, how this goes. So you might have saw my video kind of click in real quick and that let me know that it was done doing its thing. And if I come back here to the inspector, you're going to notice that there is an option that says add captions. And this is that feature I was telling you about when I recorded that video. I can add captions to the video. So I'm going to click here on add captions. And when I do this, you're going to see an option that says generate automatically. You could also enter them manually. So I'm going to say generate automatically. And it will even say how long they expect it to take. And it is going to listen to what I'm saying. And it is going to add text to the uh, transcription. So uh, yeah, isn't that cool? Sean, were you, is it Sean or Sean? I always feel bad when I see your name pop up. I want to make sure I'm saying it right. Uh, I, I, were you, so I'm guessing you weren't here Monday. So it's like Sean. Thank you, hon. Um, so yeah, this is a really cool feature and they added it in, they added it in uh, January. I'm going to head back. We're going to go over some other things and then we'll come back once it's done doing its quote unquote thing. And, Leslie, can I just jump yeah. in? Oh yeah, please um, do, hon. My Zoom crashed, um, so I had to restart it, but I think I'm no longer a panelist. I'm not seeing <laughs> the questions. We talked, about, we talked about you the whole time. We kicked you out. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I would never do that to you, kiddo. Where are you? Um, okay. I am seeing the question now, so maybe it's okay. Yeah, you are a panelist. I'm not seeing any of the attending. old ones anymore. So. Oh, I'll read them out loud, and then we can. All right. And then, so, sorry about that. Fine, carry on. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> All right, so look, it's done. So I come in here and I say edit captions. Um, look, so here it has picked up my audio. Not only has it picked up my audio, if I drag this, you'll see that it's taken each box and it's put it in its own box. And I can click here and it highlights it 
and I could even come in here and I can edit this. And when the book is played, when the book is played, it will come in here and it will generate these captions automatically when the book is played. Who had no idea? Beautiful. And if you have questions, questions, make sure you put them in Q&A. So that way, uh, that way uh, Dan can address them. It's tough to see in chat. It's tough to capture questions in chat. So you'll see an option at the bottom that says Q&A and you can edit it there. So we're going to click on done. So, um, so I got that there. We are going to click on. And then the other thing I kind of didn't mention when we talked about media, I think it's a given. Um, I can come in here and embed a video. So there's nothing stopping me from going to YouTube, getting the best video that's ever been made. And if you guys have seen me present live before, and let me just tell you, let me just give you an off one because I'm guessing some of you guys need some entertaining, entertaining things to, to binge watch. If you guys have never watched It's a Southern Thing, if you have never watched It's a Southern Thing, y'all are skedaddling through another dimension. It is some of the funnier, clean, entertaining stuff you have seen. So if you've never seen them before, uh, these guys are great and they're having a lot of fun. They're having, um, a lot of fun, not fun, but like this one, 2020 is the worst year. So uh, we, oh, it's an ad, but we'll just do this just to show you. Here is in bed, copy. So this is 2019 talking to 2020. If you've never, yeah, street names, and it's a very funny, very safe for you to watch and not feel bad. And I'll come in here, I grab the embed code, click confirm link, and now I'm adding that to my so yeah you could take you could take videos i mean anything that has an embed code if i go on twitter i'm going to show you an embed code um and so uh th you can place all sorts of things in here uh, using that code so if you don't create the video and there's a video somewhere else you can link it there so just so you know okay so moving forward let's go guess what it's time for shiny object sidetrack again are you guys ready for a shiny object sidetrack? Awesome. I want to point out, these are all in the slides. All of this is in the slides. I just would rather demo. It's a lot more fun to demo than go over the slides. Not only are they in the slides, not only are they in the slides, look, I've made numbers for you too. So like I even, look, I give you like, look, I, so there you go. So yes, it is time for SOS, otherwise known as shiny object syndrome. I'm going to do something that you think has absolutely no application, but it does. And we're going to talk to you about a website called QuickDraw, quickdraw.withgoogle.com. If you see me present, you've seen me show this many times. Um, how, who hasn't seen QuickDraw? Who doesn't know about QuickDraw? Let me see you raise your hands. Hi guys. <laughs> oh my gosh, so just so you guys know, I'm currently up to like 55 hands being raised that haven't seen this before, which is fantastic. All right, so QuickDraw is at quickdraw.withgoogle.com. And what QuickDraw is going to do is QuickDraw is going to ask me to draw something and I draw very poorly. And all along the while, it's going to try to guess what I'm drawing. So, um, so let's just jump into it. All right, wish me luck. This is probably gonna be the most embarrassing thing I do all day. Huh. I love lobster too. It's got like a little body and it's got- I see leg tail, or foot or toe and or it's tooth. Got little claws. I see giraffe That's or penguin. Oh, I know. Claw. It's Yay! lobster. Piano. Could I just do the keys? I see bench or seesaw or keyboard. Oh, I know. Yay! It's piano. A drill. Um. I see elbow or foot or stairs. Oh, I know. Hey! It's drill. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> I see squiggle. Oh, I know. Hey! It's bush. I'm, I'm, on, I'm on a roll. I see circle. Oh, I know. It's eyeglasses. I see circle or moon. Oh, I know. It's lollipop. I, yeah, I'm sorry if you didn't know about this, that you're, but, but wait, there's more if you act now. Um, so now what it's, what it's done is it's telling me, 
you know, hey, here's what you drew. Now, I did, I did okay for those. A uh, lobster, I think, is pretty funny. I'm, I'm curious, so I'm gonna click on Bush. And when I click on Bush, it is going to say why it guessed bread, why did it guess glove? And then here are other people that drew a bush that it was able to know that it was a, a bush. So one of the reasons they're asking this, one of the reasons Google has this, um, is that I can come here and I can click and they've also released something called auto draw. Who has not heard of auto draw? Please raise your hands. Awesome. So what auto draw does is auto draw lets my inner poor artist shine. And when you think of um, someone that doesn't draw well, maybe someone that needs assistance with drawing, this is very handy. So I'm going to come in here into auto draw and I'm going to go back and I'm going to try to draw that bush. And when I do that, look what's happened up here. Quick draw is automatically trying to guess what I was drawing. And it's giving me, so I thought it was a cloud, but that's okay. It looks like I came close to a crown, but it's automatically creating those drawings for me. And when I create those drawings, it will, I can download them and I can save them. Uh, so it's a great way to draw without having people really know just how poor of an artist you are. So with that in mind, I'm now going to head back to my book and I am going to come back to this plus sign and I'm going to come back to the pen tool and I'm going to come here to this first pen and I want to point out that you can change uh, the pen sizes and I'm going to guess most of you have worked with the pen tool before. Uh, I want to point this out to the left of the pen tool. You have the ability to change the color, but I really dig these down here. These are magic ink. So now I'm drawing in a rainbow. So as I keep moving, you're going to notice that the color changes based on uh, moving. And I even have ones in here that are glitter. And I can then come in here and erase them. And then I have a paint bucket so I can actually come in here and dunk paint in here in all sorts of different ways. Yeah, this is a safe glitter. This is the glitter that doesn't get all over the floor. So, which, which I kind of dig. And, um, and then I can erase them and, and all that good kind of stuff. I even have emojis and there are hundreds of emojis to search and you could even search the emojis themselves. So if you were looking for a pizza, you could come in here and find like the pizza emoji. And once again, all the things that I've shown you before, it does that just fine. But the other thing we can do, if I come back to this pen tool, is there is auto draw. So just so you guys know, pen, brush, crayon, highlighter, auto draw. So I could come in here and start my drawing. And then up here, it is going to come in here and it is going to start suggesting things based on my drawing. Don't look like I'm doing the best pizza in here, so we'll go with a uh, boomerang. <laughs> but how many of you had no idea that there was auto draw uh, built into? Uh, isn't that awesome? And this is, I mean, I love this opportunity because usually when I'm presenting, book creators might be five minutes that I get to mention. So it's, it's been a lot of fun getting to do this. The only, the slides hurt my head, but that's okay. It's totally worth it. All right, so, so we've done that. I think I've gone over the pen tool kind of, but let's go into a really cool accessibility option. You can actually use your tab key so this is me hitting the tab key on the keyboard. And if you watch my screen, you'll notice that as I'm clicking the tab key, do you see how it's changing each of the options? So I'm able to click the tab key and I'm able to do that. And then when I want to access the item, I can actually hit the return key. So I just hit the return key and now I'm gonna hit the tab key and you're gonna notice that it just jumped down to this pen tool, and then I'm gonna hit the return key. And so now you'll see that, do you guys see that orange square with the black dot? So if I hold down the tab key, 
I always do this a little wrong, Dan. I always mess this one up a tiny bit. It's the tab key, spacebar, tab key. Uh, spacebar, spacebar, oh. and uh, arrow keys. Which, if you want, if you want to draw. Okay. All right. And uh, hold down shift as well if you want to. Ah, to shift. Go further. Ah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Shift space arrow. Ah. I don't know why it's not. Hold down the space bar and then use the arrow keys. Yeah, it's not moving. You see on my Mac, it, oh, that, it, that. I had it, ugh. Oh, there we go, see? All right, there we go. You see, it's tab, uh, Dan, it's tab on the Mac. So guys, look what I'm doing. So I'm holding tab, space, and the arrow keys, and I'm able to draw almost like it's an Etch-a-Sketch. And so you want to talk about a neat little accessibility feature. Now, how many of you did I lose because you're trying this out right now? Because it got super quiet in the chat. So <laughs> I know you guys. Uh, Megan, you could use switches with this. Yeah, if it supports. Yeah, absolutely. You could. What a, Megan, what a great point. Uh, you could use, and I didn't think about this, and I'm sure Dan is probably going to say, yes, you can. You could absolutely use accessibility switches with this. You absolutely can. So, um, so yeah, so there's that. All right, how are we doing on time? We're doing okay, yeah, yes. All right, so we're gonna come back here. Um, we talked about the pen tool, accessibility in the pen tool. What I'd like to do is come back here to the text tool. And I wanna show you a feature I didn't mention last time because I felt it falls, this falls nicely into accessibility. And you'll notice this microphone and what this microphone does is dictation. So I'll come in here. Hello, everyone. So now I'm not typing. I am simply speaking and it is capturing my voice and it will then place this text into the document. Great for people who need voice assistance. Great for those younger learners. Great for those people who might not be able to type. Not only that, if you look in the upper left corner, you will see it says English. There is support for over 120 different languages in Book Creator. So here it is. So there's that text. Um, and if I keep it selected, all the things we talked about last time before I come back here into the inspector, uh, I can come in here, and, oops, and I can change the font size. All of those different things are available. So nice little feature. Who had no idea that that, that feature was in there? Cool. Love it. I love teaching. I love learning. I love when you guys teach me. It's all, it's all a beautiful thing. So uh, if I come back here into a uh, text and just to point out when I click, you're going to see it's interesting because it grabs onto English. It's tough to do, but it'll, if, before I start speaking, it would, um, it would let me change the language. So, okay, we'll delete that out. So let's come back here to the plus. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that I want to record my voice. And this is really, once again, a really cool, the neat thing about when we talk about book creator and accessibility is we know that accessibility takes all sorts of forms. So we might have someone that has to type. We might have someone that has to speak. And that's what I really like about book creator. I mean, there's a lot to like about it, but there are so many different ways to be able to get that content um, on the book. So let's come in here and say record. So it's going to record my voice. So yes, Book Creator allows you to record your voice. You could do this for sound effects. You could do this for page read-alongs. There's all sorts of things that you can use with the recording option. Now, when I do this, I'll say use recording. And there is my recording. So now that I have my recording, so yes, Book Creator, I can click on the inspector. When I click on the inspector, by the way, yes, I can change the size. So if you really wanted it to be obvious, if I click on the inspector, you're going to no notice another great accessibility feature, and it is the add transcript option. So what add transcript is going to do is just like with the video, it's going to automatically generate a transcript. And when someone goes to play the book, it will display the text instead of the audio if they 
can't if they have hearing issues. So it is a really nice, <laughs> okay, Jennifer, I need to know, Jennifer's like raising her hand 18 times, which always makes me laugh. I'm guessing Jennifer's happy. That makes me happy. <laughs> I love that. Okay, so um, so I'm going to hold, click off on this for now. Uh, well, I'll click off with this for now, just so I can keep demoing. I want to show you. Um, I want to show you another nice little feature. If I come in here into the inspector, you'll notice that there's an option that says "Invisible while while reading." Why? Well, there you go. So there's my transcript. It says it's ready, and there's my transcripts. How about that? That isn't cool. So there's an interesting option here that says invisible when reading. And so if you do that, it hides the icon. And why would you do that? Well, there's nothing stopping you from taking, you know, another kitten picture or whatever the heck you want and layering it over. No, oh, I gotta go for di different kitten. So you could actually say, you know, click the kitten to learn more about the kitten. So they think they're clicking on this bad boy and I'm gonna move this to the back but when they click on it, what they're doing is they are actually activating the audio and they can hear what is going on. Does that make sense, guys? Cool. So there's, so there's a lot of ways. And one thing I had to do is I had to move that to the front. So I did that kind of quick because I was talking. But when you right click, I said move to front. So I have the audio in the front and it's invisible. So they're looking at the photo in the back. And so that way when they click it, it's going to play, it's going to play that, um, it's going to play that audio. So nice little feature there. Okay. So now that we've done all of those shenanigans, how we do and how many of us are like, yay, I like this thing. Keep in mind, my books are pretty, pretty eh compared to um, other people's books. Uh, we'll, we'll show we'll show you this in a second. So I created my book. So let's, let's head back. And so let's go over some overview, some, some overall things that we haven't touched base yet with how all of this works. We've already gone on pages. I think undo is self-explanatory. Uh, I'll, I'll come here and then we'll head back. This is the read book option. So I can come in here and I can click on read book. And so now, and I'm just going to use my arrow keys. Remember, here is my amazing book that we put together together. I'm so proud of us. When I click on read book, let me do that one more time. I go from edit to read. You'll notice there's some options here. I can view this in full screen. I can share this, meaning I can publish it online. I can download this as an ebook. I can even print it. And then I can even come in here and say show side by side pages. And we're going to talk about this guy because it's great. Read to me. Do I want to highlight words? Play automatically. So if I say read to me, Hello everyone, so now I'm not typing, I am simply speaking. And if you don't like that voice, no problem. You can come in here and you can change it to a variety of different voices. So you can do all sorts of things. So if you didn't know the read to me option is there, the read to me option is there, which is really neat. Okay, so now that we've explored this area, let's get back to kind of like the core area of Book Creator. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come back here to my books. So when I come back here to my Here's books, we are looking at my main book. If this, if I had more books in this library, which I'm going to show you in a moment, um, you, uh, you can, you'll see more books in here. But let me come in here and let me just show you some options right down here at the bottom. Uh, I can import another book. I can move this to a different library. If you had different libraries, keep in mind multiple libraries is a premium feature. I could copy a book. I could combine books. I think copy a book is really cool, especially for a teacher. Could you imagine creating a base book for your students and then your students fill in that book? So that's a really nice thing that you can do with Book Creator. You can almost make it like a template book if you wanted to. I could even come in here and say publish online, which means people could see that book online, but it, the links are private, um, which is cool. And I could download it as an ebook. And then this one was what we, we did before. Um, you are welcome, Sean. Make a template book, make it easier on your kids. And I'll, I'll give you a great example of, of how that was done. So I, because Dan was nice enough to give me uh, a, uh, give me a higher end copy. I have multiple libraries. So I want to show you a library that has uh, more books in it 
uh, than mine. So I'm going to come in here to uh, my, uh, the class library here. So, oh yeah, so I forgot to mention that. Who just said that? Josh, thank you. I forgot that. So Josh, everyone say thank you, Josh, because I completely forgot that. Um, and let me come and find some text and thank you for that. So we were talking about choose your own adventure. I mentioned that last time and I didn't mention it here. Let me do that real quick. So when we were talking about links and making links, so when we were talking about uh, text, I said links, I'll go over that. And I totally didn't, I totally didn't do that. So I'm gonna come in here and say add link because here's the deal. Not only could you make it go to a web address, you could have it go to a different page number. So I could say, have this go to page two of this book. So Josh was mentioning a make your own adventure where you could say, choose, make a choice for this or this. And so if they click here, they can go to this page. If they click here, they can go to that page. So, um, so that is a great, that's a great example of how, um, how you can do a choose your own adventure in book creator. So thank you for that, Josh. Okay, I'm gonna head back to my books. I'm gonna head back to my library and you're going to notice I have two libraries and then there's also libraries that are shared with me. Uh, the way that students will get to a library is I'm not gonna to toggle this on, but what's so cute is I toggled it on. Um, uh, I toggled this on on Monday and a couple people made books in my library. <laughs> Which was really cute. I logged in a couple of days ago. I'm like, ah, uh, they made books in my library. So you'll see here that we have multiple books, and this is what your library will look like when you um, use Book Creator. You invite your students, and then you can create up to 40 books. So one of the things you get for 90 days is collaboration, and I'm going to admit that I have not done this before. So I said to Dan, and I said it like 10 minutes before the webinar, I'm like, Dan, <laughs> where can we collaborate? And he added me, he's like, join this library. So I went in here and said, join a library. And so Dan, do I just open a book up and then I just like do this and you'll go to that page and Let, Let's show start everyone? a new one. Let's start a new oh, one. Okay, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> What, you don't want me to mess up your book? I'm just kidding. Do you want to start the book? Do you want me to start the book? You do it. So um, you need to start a new book and then turn on collaboration for it. So gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Oh, new book. Do, do, do your book first. Uh, of course. Woo. All righty. So there's my exciting book. <laughs> Collaborate. So what I did is I, I created the book. I went back to the bookshelf. And then down here where there's share, there is the option to collaborate. When I click on collaborate, I'm going to say start collaboration. And so now you're going to see that collaboration is on. So Dan, does this mean everyone in this library can, can work on this book or yes. can I make it specific? Cool. So it's like full blown shenanigans. Yeah. So if you go into the book, you'll see that we're both in there. Oh yeah, there we are. There's the two of us. So beautiful. So I can draw something. He can draw something. So, oh, that, Dan, that was darn easy and darn cool. So it shows you, oh, there we go. So there's Dan. So I could see exactly the page that you're on. I'm curious, how many of you had no idea that collaboration was in, was in Book Creator? So, and it's free right now. It's free. Um, so it's free for 90 days. And I have a pricing slide. I have a pricing slide in here somewhere. Uh, and then the other thing is, Dan, I forget where this is, kiddo. Uh, sharing to Google Classroom and Facebook and all of those. Where is that hiding? Yeah, so, well, if, if you publish it online first. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. That's where it was. So yeah. before, I, before I go over some other things, I know I have this book published online. Thank you. That was it. Um, and then if I come in here to... Do I have to open the book? See, I can't remember no, no, where go, it is. Go back, go back and then click on the, um, the little icon. Ah, there it is. And I have this you, in the slide, guys. Yeah, read so online. If you, if you read it online. Yep. This is the link that everyone else will yep. be seeing when you awesome. share it. Awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. So, just so you guys know, you could also in Book Creator, and I have that in the slides because, as you saw, I got lost on doing this. Um, 
share to classroom, share on Facebook, share on Twitter, embed on, on the website and print. So there's that. Okay, so I'm going to head to the slides um, and point at a couple things I want to make sure that you know about. There is a wonderful, wonderful teacher resources area, and they did their teacher resources in a very brilliant way. Um, they made it books. So if I come in here to my teacher dashboard and I come in here into resources, you're going to see all of these different books available to you. So here's one about ways to enhance literacy. If I come in here, there's all these different ones. This one, I have a link just to this book because this is all about differentiated learning. And this is a beautiful book that will go over all the different ways that you can use Book Creator for differentiated learning. So there are a bevy of resources available for you. And then if you didn't know, you can, we talked about embedding and that might be new to you. And if you didn't know about all the ways that you can embed content, there is a book just for that. So you have those options. And then they just published this early April. Um, and I think this is so great. So when you log in and create your uh, book creator account, or if you already have one and you log back in, you are going to see this book waiting for you for free. And this is the big book, this is the big book creator activity book. And it's over 50 different things that you can do while you're, while you're at home. Um, and there's, all different things in here. So you can share this with your students. Remember, you can you know, copy a book and share it with your students and have all these different things that you can do uh, with your family, with parents or whatnot. So I just love that, that they included that. So that's in there as well. I just think that's really neat of them. All right, so let's move forward because I wanna make sure I cover everything. So you're gonna get teacher resources. The other thing I want to mention is they have put together some really nice remote learning guides, not just for you as a teacher, but for once again, kids at home with their parents, resources that you can share with parents to have your students that are at home right now uh, working with Book Creator. And like I said, also the, um, the iPad app as well. And then I also included this link. Uh, I went over these. A lot of these are in slides. So I've, I've added um, the accessibility content throughout the webinar. I'm hoping those who were here Monday felt they got a couple enough new tips and tricks to be back again today. So, um, and then I also gave you a link to uh, the resources area for that, uh, and then a link to that book, like I mentioned before. I also gave you a link to their accessibility-based blog entries on their website. Uh, I gave you a link to the open dyslexic font so you could uh, learn a little bit more about that. And I talked about navigating the keyboard and gave you a link on how to use that more effectively than I did. And I even told you that they are uh, WCAGAA compliant. So I gave, you, um, I gave you that information as well. And then also here you have a bunch of different support links. But if we come back and look at the slides, what I, what I worked hard or tried to do at least I tried to do. So here's an embedding content. Anywhere that Book Creator had a support article for it, I included a link to the support article so you guys could go and click and learn on it um, a little bit more. So, uh, so there you have it, kids. Now we get to the thank you slide. Whee! And now what we're going to do is I'm going to say, uh, well, I'll leave the share up. We'll leave the share up just in case uh, we, we want to show something. How do we do? How many of you are like happy, happy? Awesome. That makes me happy, just so you know. And I'd like to thank Book Creator. Book Creator sponsored me for this. So, you know, I probably would have uh, done Book Creator and a little bit of an uh, item here or there, but this gave me the opportunity to do an entire Book Creator webinar, which I've had so much fun doing because I think there's a lot of people out there um, that had no idea all the features in, are in Book Creator. So. I uh, know. Uh, thank you for the kind. You guys are very kind. Thank you uh, for the kind words. So um, I'm going to here. Let me take the share off just because I want to, you know, protect uh, protect names. And 
I'm going to go and I'm going to start reading aloud. And thank you guys for the kind words. I'm going to start going over the questions. And if you have more, Dan, do you want to try to um, do you want to try to tackle the ones that are in open, and then I'll start reading out the answered ones? What do you want to do, my dear? Yeah, I've been working my way through them, so there's a few. Okay, cool. Was, so, uh, um, how does your site uh, gain images if you're using Google search? Uh, so they don't automatically cite. So I'm guessing that's alt text. So they don't automatically cite the image, um, but you can hover over it and change it that way. Am I correct with that one? I think what, what oh. they're asking about here is how do you, when you're going to Google image search and you choose oh. an image, how do you cite? Oh. So what I've explained is we don't automatically cite the images, but when you hover over an image in Google search, um, you'll see the citation in the bottom left. So mm -hmm. you could copy and paste that if that's what you want to do. Ah, I gotcha. Good point. Thank you. Can you create a book on the app and be able to collaborate with the app? And no, collaboration is online only. So definitely think of the iPad as like that home tool. And, and Dan, feel free to cut in anytime and say and add things. But uh, the app is really uh, just, um, you know, for, let's say, personal use and online. Chrome version is um, for collaboration. Dan, do you remember when you let me show Book Creator on Chrome for the very first time? Yeah, uh, that yeah. Was so it was fun. amazing. <laughs> that was uh, so fun. He let me show it at ISTE. Uh, so I got to show it. How many people were in there? About over a thousand? On the biggest screen I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, that was a fun moment. That was a really um, fun the moment. The only thing I'd add to what you said about the collaboration is yeah. you, you can't use it in the iPad app, but Right. But uh, the, the online app does work in Safari and Chrome on, a, on an iPad. So if you wanted to access it. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Good point. You do that. And then that would fall. Does that fall same for Android tablet? Could they use the, could they use a yeah, web browser? Yeah. Chrome, yeah. 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 So perfect. So you, so you can use it that way as well. Um, will it translate the captions? Not yet. That would be awesome, though. I always love the word yet. I don't know if Dan meant the word yet that way, but not yet. If your district blocks YouTube, will the embed feature still allow the video to be shown? And Dan answered it. No, it's, if it's blocked, it's blocked. But the interesting thing is, at least for this moment in time, I, I don't think many of us are on a school firewall, <laughs> at least at this moment in time. Uh, we'll receive an email with a copy of the webinar for future viewing. Yes. Uh, so how that's going to work, thank you for answering that, Dan, is it takes about 30 minutes for the video to be posted as a stream. Uh, once that's done, I will send you an email with a link to the slides or the slides themselves. I'll send your certificate and I will send, all you have to do is actually go right back to the registration page and it will let you view it. And then you can view that for a week on my site. And then I'm going to be handing them off to Dan and the gang at Book Creator, who the other partner in crime with Dan is Dan. So I'll be sending it to the Dans and they'll be able to I, I think, I don't know if Dan is your plan to put it on YouTube or whatnot. Is what, what are you thinking I'm doing with Yeah, that? if you let us, I'll, I'll put it on YouTube, yeah. All right, well, we'll talk, my people will talk. I, I see, <laughs> I see no issue with that. Although I'd love to bring these people back for more book creator webinars down the line, so. <laughs> yeah, I see that. Um, can you embed a book within a book? You can, how meta? Yes, you can. Uh, is there a limit to the number of books that can be shared with you? No, which is a great feature, I think. I mean, I know. Can we publish but only have in-house teachers or students see it somehow? Um, or is the link public? Yeah, so the link is, is not public. So it's whoever you share it with. That's the only way they found out, which is why I thought it was um, really cute how a couple people saw me share it in the webinar and they jumped into my book creator, which I thought was, was, one, was adorable. Um, if, is there a time limit on video creation? As Dan said, no, there's not, but I would tell you, keep mindful of your hard drive um, and the file size, and also keep mindful that, I don't know if you guys have ever heard the word, the term that if it's a four-year-old, they only have a four-second attention span. If it's a 10-year-old, they only have a 10-second attention span. So I'd always say, just keep in mind of the attention span of who you're designing um, the book for. So uh, then someone asked uh, how to change color. This is the inspector. Um, how do you, oh yeah, if your school, so it was about QR codes. Um, if someone said if the kids are remote and they don't have email, how do they sign in? And that would be uh, QR codes. And I've seen some pretty, I've seen some pretty entertaining ways of, of doing those QR codes. Everything from remote learning to mail to whatnot. 
And thank you. So someone asked what alt text was. Uh, so then Dan, so we went into the information about books. All right, files. Is there um, any questions that, that hit you like, ooh, that Dan, that you're like, ooh, let's address that one? Um, no, I don't think so. I'm still going through a couple of ones in the open ones, so you could have a look at them now. Okay. Uh, so we're just asking. So much questions. Yeah. <laughs> just praising you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just people are just asking some logistics about more like some, so I'm, I'm, I'm skinning over them because, uh, so someone asked, can you change the language in, in the captions? Yes, you can. You can absolutely do that. 120 languages supported. Uh, do the kids have to make books in library you create? Yes, that's the main place that they create them. Uh, can what? Edge browser shows book creator landing page when I click. Uh, so if Scott's still here, I would definitely say check to make sure Edge is up to date because I know they just updated it. Pricing information. Uh, limit of the books. Yep. Okay. Um, and then just the safety compliance, which is great. Okay. Gosh, these guys are asking good questions, but we'll be here forever if we go over all these. I'm just trying to look for the ones that, um, oh, this is a good, uh, someone said, um, if you've had book created for years, do you still get the 90 day upgrade? And the answer is yes, which is great. That's very cool of you. Yeah, there was a question about um, some uh, privacy thing, like ED2 or something, which I hadn't heard of. So I'm, I'm happy to follow up on that. Uh, we are copper and FERPA compliant and we tick all the boxes in that respect, privacy and um, so I'm, I'm guessing it probably is, but it's not one I've actually heard of. So. And I like this question from Josh about a time limit. Uh, so here's what Yelkey is, Dan, and this is why, uh, so Yelkey is, you can generate a URL and the URL, or you could generate a Yelkey. So I can go in and paste in a long-winded URL and go to yelkey.com, paste it in instead of timer. And then it like yesterday's was yelkey.com slash many. And then it took everyone to the link that I was talking about, but I set a three hour timer and then it went away. So they weren't able to use that Yelkey anymore. And the main idea is, so you get a quick, easy way to share a link. Uh, mm. And, it, and it, it has to keep easy words. So that, that's why there's a timer. But more in the idea of can you toggle collaboration on and off? Like, could you put a timer on collaboration? So that might just be an interesting thing saying that your students only have one hour to collaborate on a book and then yeah. taking it away from them so the teacher could then see what they did. Yeah, well, I guess you could turn off collaboration. Yeah, as the teacher yeah you could. And then, and yeah. Would, so yeah, there's no way to do it with like an automatic thing, but you could just manually switch off collaboration. Yeah, no, that'd, be kind of, <laughs> <laughs> that'd be kind of funny and good at the same time. <laughs> um, so someone asked if you get access to the books. So I, I, at the time it was asked 1058, I think was those books in the resources area that I showed, like the embed book, the math book, the mm. differentiated learning book. If that's the case, if Nancy's still here, yeah, you get access to those books. That's part of book creator resources yeah, and the, the big book. It's in the, they're, they're in the teacher dashboard when you signed in yeah, they're yeah. on our website, but um, there's a yeah. resources tab on the teacher dashboard. Yep. So, uh, and then someone asked where the big, big book is. Um, oh, and then someone asked if it, it updates on, yep, they update automatically. There's collaboration feature. <laughs> Dan, I, lo I love the word possibly. Are you working well, towards that? embedding in teams? Possibly. And then someone asked us about that recently. <laughs> um, Possibly. I, 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 I honestly, yeah, Dan answered that question. The other Dan, it's, it's something about, because I'm not sure how Teams works, but I think it's yeah. if it, they, they need to update Edge for Teams and then it might work already. Do you, do you need me to, I, you know, I, I've been hanging out with Microsoft. Of course, if you want, strange, I can, yeah. 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 Do you want me to get you in touch with them? Um, it, it's something Just that people are asking for more and more. So I guess. Yeah, because it, it's because it it's happen. such a. Yeah, it's such a popular, it's such a popular remote learning tool 
So you're having just piles and piles of people ending up using Teams. And so I'm sure what they're wanting is because Teams can embed everything in there. Uh, that's probably why, they, why they're asking. So, um, do, do, do. okay, cool. So uh, there's a bunch of open questions. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just I'm just responding to them as well. Okay. <laughs> Someone wants to know if they can email you anytime with questions about book. Posting. I would love to say you can email me anytime with questions, but my knowledge only goes so far, uh, and I feel bad. And I'm I'm averaging. Please feel free. Uh, please feel free to email, but you need to know I'm averaging right now about 500 emails a day. So um, I would also say the support links. My knowledge only goes so far. And once it goes there, I'm going to point you to book creator support. And I also do want to point out their support articles are very, very well done. So, so just, just a heads up on that. Uh, okay. Other, other things. What else we got, Dan, anything else you could think of my dear? Did I miss anything completely mess something up? No, I'm happy. Oh, that makes me happy. You with your short hair being happy makes me happy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, kids, anything else before we, before we wish you a wonderful rest of your Friday? Yes, Deb, you're going to record, receive, not a recording. You don't get to keep the recording. It's going to be available on demand. And so it'll be available on demand on my website for a week. Then I'm going to give the recording to Dan and then Dan can figure out what to do with the recording. So, uh, and then you'll be getting, uh, you'll be getting slides as well. So <laughs> people want to, people want a book creator watch party, Dan. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> It'd be meta. <laughs> oh, Lorraine, that's my goal. I know that same thing. I know book creator, but you don't realize all the great features in there. And um, especially for remote learning. All right, kids, I'm officially going to wish you a thank you, a wonderful day. Hey, Dan, thank you for sponsoring me. Thank you for being here for part no, of thank this. Thank you, Leslie. It'd oh, my great. pleasure. We're all in this together. Uh, guys, have a wonderful, I, I probably will see some of you tonight if you're coming to my, oh yeah, snacks. I forgot, have your snacks. And I'll probably see some of you tonight. Dan, I'm doing a class called Silly iPhone Trips. <laughs> So that's why I'm going to see some of them tonight. All right, guys, I'm clicking end meeting and I'm saying thank you guys for everything. Mwah.